Good morning and welcome to a midweek version of Show Us Your Tips brought to you by progroupracing.com.au, one of the leading and premium racing websites um, in Australia. So uh, go online, check out Progroup Racing uh, for all your racing news, tips and form guides and and everything else that's happening in racing. So um, Beaver here, Um, unfortunately without Daggy this week, he's uh, been struck down with the dreaded Lurgy. So Beaver's just doing um, a short preview of the midweek racing coming from Ramwick, Sandown, and some tips from Eagle Farm, where the Beaver is known as the King of the North. So uh, stay tuned and join in as um, I give you a few tips after my preview of this today's racing. So starting off at uh, Ramwick on the Kensington track, um, surface is currently a soft six. Uh, weather's pretty fine outside, uh, so track should play uh, quite well, um, probably just on the better side of soft, hopefully, and uh, give every horse a chance in its respective race. Uh, kicking off in the first, um, tough little opener here, a maiden, a maiden, uh, lot of news first starters here and some unraced uh, of the unraced brigade, and then there's some tried and tested horses. I've gone for uh, one of the unraced in in the number one airman. Uh, Hawks trained, usually has these horses fresh and ready to go. Interesting, it's starting in midweek company to start with. So I'm hoping here that uh, Pikey can get the right run here from gate nine and prove hard to beat. Currently a bit better than the $3 mark. So not a bad way to start the day. Uh, the second race, again, another two-year-old maiden handicap. Uh, similar style event to the first, a uh, couple of first starters and a few that have raced and shown a little bit of ability. I'm going for Sorgente uh, from the Waller stable ridden by Bowman, uh, currently around the $7 mark. I think it's uh, first up run was quite good. I think it will derive plenty of uh, benefit from that run. And I think it can sit off the speed here and finish too well. Main danger, fashion legend, first starter from the Friedman camp. I think it can run well and probably can't leave out the favourite, uh, Ramones, who's been pretty consistent in its first two starts. Moving on to the third race here, uh, another two-year-old Philly Maiden uh, over the 1,150 metres here. Really hard to line these ones up. Uh, most of these have only had the one or two starts, if any. But I'm, I'm fairly keen on Super Chilled here at the around the $6 mark. I think um, first up, uh, Waller produced this. It was a really lovely run. Um, finished off nicely from well back in the field uh, at the Ramwick track uh, behind Ta- Tashi. Only finished a length off him. And I think with the extra 50 metres, that certainly um, plays into its favour. And if it has had some natural improvement here, uh, can run well. Race four uh, gets one of my better bets of the day. Uh, number six, parlayed again from the combination of Pike on board from the Hawk Stable. Uh, it was pretty impressive first up um, at Newcastle. Uh, one fairly comfortably just sitting off the speed there in, in the softer going. Um, and prior to that in its first preparation was, was really nice and trialled well uh, before its first up win. So parlayed on top for me. Uh, Maybe, maybe Jay Anther, uh, given its consistency as the main danger. Uh, yeah, moving on to the fifth race here, 1800 meter here, benchmark 72. Uh, you've got the in for Milky Bar Kid from the Waterhouse Stable. Uh, looks to be a progressive type on the way up. It's drawn wide, but I think it'll come across and um, probably the control the pace here. And some of the horses in this, I'm just not confident that they're, they're uh, really up to this mark or, uh, you know, are the type of horses that are, are consistent enough to, to uh, challenge Milky Bar Kid in the straight. Um, if I'm looking for a bit of value in this, uh, would, wouldn't uh, be afraid to have a few bucks on Freedom Square from the Masara stable. Um, had two wins out of three starts. This preparation comes to town here, looks to be well-placed and looks suited by the distance. Uh, race six, uh, we move into another benchmark 72, this time over the 1,250 metres. Um, a fairly open affair again, a few horses again that are a little bit inconsistent and mix their, their, their runs. I'm gonna go for the Mastara ceasefire. Uh, you can forget last run, uh, just didn't have any luck, wasn't suited. 
Uh, and prior to that, uh, ran a really lovely race at Musselbrook over the 1280. Uh, set off the pace and put pay to him with a, with a big weight there, 62 kilos. Um, comes into this with 59, Nash on board. I think that sets up quite nicely for this in a race that um, there's probably five or six really good chances. So around the $7 mark, uh, sees five for me in the six. Uh, moving on to the seventh race over the 1400 meters here, uh, another benchmark 72, uh, really open affair here. I kind of narrowed it down to two chances. Uh, the favorite Brimstone at $2.70, thought it might have little been a little bit skinny. Uh, would like to see a few extra points on the price uh, around that, but it's got Reese Jones on board getting the two kilo plane, which is flying at the moment. Uh, third up here, so should be cherry ripe for this. Uh, Widdop uh, is, is a good trainer and brings good horses to town. Uh, so it's got it slightly on top, uh, just in front of Speed Leg Legend. Um, it was a nice run first up. Um, it's been placed seven out of its 10 starts. I think it, with natural improvement, will run well. It was it was a good run behind Cross Talk first up, and uh, I think it will improve on that. And to finish the day, uh, probably no harder race on the day than this one. Uh, really tough that way to finish the, the day. I've settled on Sneaky Page around the $5 mark uh, in the Noonham stable. Uh, only had the six starts and uh, four of those have been in the placing. Only the one win, but resume last start at Randwick over the 1,000. Uh, sat midfield and uh, finished off nicely. Um, only just mini missing in a pretty good go on the line by half a length. Uh, gate nine, I don't think hurts. And as long as Park can get it a nice cozy run in transit, I think it can be the hardest to beat in the last. So just summing up at uh, Randwick, my best bet on the day, race four, number six, Parlayed. And my value bet of the day comes up in race three, number four, Super Chilled uh, at Randwick. If we switch over now to Sandown, um, Track heavy eights, the weather is overcast, so I don't see the track improving too much. Um, it's a little bit improved uh, from, from the overnight uh, rating, uh, which was a nine, now back into an eight. Uh, so probably on the better side of heavy. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the way the track plays here. I'm expecting it sort of to get off the fence a little bit, um, but yeah, you'll need to watch the early races to get a good line on that. Having said that, I've looked at the card, probably one of the toughest days of racing I've seen at, at, at Sandown in a long time. Um, lots of horses in each race with plenty of chances, uh, plenty of value on the card. Um, so it makes for a tricky day, but uh, you'll only need to get a winner or two and uh, finish on the better side of the ledger. In the first race, uh, I've come up with number five Nordic uh, from the Moroni stable. Uh, look, it's last preparation. I only had the one start. I uh, finished sixth uh, behind Gentleman Roy at, at Flemington. Uh, so not a bad run. Uh, Gentleman Roy would uh, put pay to these horses fairly comfortable. And then it was put out. So probably had a few uh, problems. And prior to that, um, it only had the one start before it had nearly a year's layoff where it had won at Caulfield beating King Magnus. So I think this horse has a little bit of ability, but it's obviously had some problems. Uh, hoping it's overcome those three kilo claim from Lafferty or a Lafferty there. So it gets in at 58. Um, fingers crossed it is ready and raring to go. The second race of the day, uh, a staying event over the 2100 meter uh, benchmark 78. Pretty good field this. Um, a very open race, but uh, some good up and coming horses and you know probably midweek company, but uh, have a bit of ability. And uh, each of those have won in their last two starts, um, and I'd speak of the top four, Gate, Crash, Fossing, Shakespeare, and Manola. I think all of those are, are, are as good a chance as each other in this. Um, I've settled on Flossing. I thought its first up run uh, was pretty impressive at Bendigo. Uh, sort of was around the about, back, about 10th on the turn, uh, but let down beautifully um, in the heavy going. I think this will really suit and set up fairly similar here. Uh, gets a little bit of weight relief from that, even though up in class a little bit. Uh, around the $4.50s, $5 mark, I think it's a nice bet um, in front of Gate Crash, who I think it can turn around its last start failure after two good wins. Race three, uh, another staying event, the 2400 metre benchmark 70. 
this is a, a truly tricky affair. We've got four, four horses in the market here, all under $6, and then uh, they get out sort of around the $15 plus dollar mark. Uh, I think one of the winners will come from that four. I've settled on Barago, uh, purely off the basis that it's won its last three, and all of those have been fairly good wins. Um, last start, and it's it's been over the distance. I think it's fit. I think it's uh, this sets up nicely, and I think winning form is good form at this time of the year. A couple of those runs, it's won fairly comfortably. Um, I'm going to stick with the winning form and say that Farago can run a nice race in race three. Moving to the fourth race, the 1300 metre uh, uh, benchmark 70 for fillies and mares. Um, I've noticed here one of the horses that I did have a liking for last night that was about $12, Arapuni Princess. It's just come into $6. So there's a bit of a go here for Arapuni Princess. A um, couple of scratchings, but I wouldn't have thought it would have made that big a difference. And I did have it on top uh, to win this race. I thought it presented really good value. Uh, three starts in this time have been um, a little bit average, but in much better company than this, uh, both at Caulfield, uh, and it wasn't too far off the winners in those. It was only three lengths off the winners, then went to Mornington, again in a decent race, and finished really hard from back in the field, uh, again making ground. I'm hoping the longer straight will suit at Sandown, and by the looks of it, uh, there's a bit of money around for it. So I've got Arapuni Princess on top. Uh, would have liked to get the 12 bucks last night. Moving into race five, uh, benchmark 70 over the 1200 meters. Again, another open race where we've got four horses all fairly much in a line at the each way odds uh, in the market. And then outside of that, uh, you get into the double figure odds. Again, I think one of the winners will come from, from that four. I've settled on mask up, mask up from the wild stable. Uh, Went to Morfittville and won very nicely over there. And then since come back to Flemington, ran a really nice race behind Zach the Boss down the straight there, uh, only a length and a half off the winner there and finished uh, off quite nicely. And then followed that up with another nice run down the straight. I think around the bend here suits. I think he'd get the right run from the two gate, get off the fence and hopefully Harry Coffey can ride us a winner. Moving into the sixth race, uh, we go into the 1200 metre three-year-old, uh, 64 rated race. Um, again, this is a, a, another really tricky affair. And I was looking around again, about five horses here under the, the, the double figure odds. And then the market gets out uh, quite substantially outside of that. I've settled again on the wild stable. Um, the lightly raced uh, number 10, Timson, only had the two starts. One, it's made in uh, nicely at Casterton before going to Caulfield in a group three race, one by Lightsaber. Only finished three lengths um, off Lightsaber in that uh, before it was put out and spelled. And it's been given um, 280 days before it's come back here. So they've given it plenty of time to get ready for this. And uh, again, I hope that it is ready to go. And if it is, I think it might be um, a better horse than these. So race six, number 10, Timpson. Uh, moving along to the seventh race, uh, Philly and Mare benchmark 70 over the 1600 metre race here. And I've got Cyclone Sally on top here. Um, really like uh, some of the form, this preparation for Cyclone Sally. Uh, been up for a while now, um, since March, but is racing very consistently. Uh, a nice win at Sandown last start, jumped on the bunny, led them up and gave nothing else a chance winning by four lengths um, prior to that. I was only just nutted over the 1600 at Sandown. Uh, won at Kite and barely convincedly after leading all the way. Um, this is this is good form for this race. Uh, pretty keen on Cyclone Sally. I think it can run really well. Uh, moving along to the eighth race here. Um, some old favourites here um, that don't win very often. I talk about fifth position, Kult, Mark Colt. Uh, all, all fairly much uh, in the market here. Um, fifth position and cool around the $4 mark. Look, against my better judgment, I'm going to go for Daggy's Horse Cool. Um, if it doesn't win today, uh, I can't see when it is ever going to win another race. It looks to be slightly better than these. Um, Blake McDougall on board, who is flying at the moment, uh, riding really well. I'm going to tip Cool um, against my better judgment um, and think today could be the day it gets back into the winner's circle.
That finishes up uh, Sandown. My best bet on the card at Sandown is race seven, number three, Cyclone Sally at pretty good odds. I think you'll get around the 450 mark. And my value bet comes up in race four, number two, Arapuni Princess. That's Sandown and Randwick. If we nick up quickly to Eagle Farm, where I'll just give you a couple of my better bets on the day. Uh, pretty tricky race, good four at uh, Eagle Farm. So uh, uh, the track has come up quite well there. Uh, sort of kind of stayed clear of the early races. Uh, my first best bet of the day comes up in race five, number one, Lansborough Lad. Uh, drawn nicely in the five gate, Van Dyke. Uh, Last three starts have been seconds, uh, sets up nicely here today to get a win under its belt. My next bet um, comes up in race seven, and that's number eight, Or I uh, really like the way it won last start, let down beautifully, nice nice little win, around the $4 mark here, bit of money for it this morning, uh, price was a little bit better last night, but around the $4 mark, I think it can run well um, each way all day. And then I think um, we can finish off the day with a bit of certainty here. Race eight, number four, go one G resuming. Uh, pretty skinny odds, but I think if you want to uh, couple it up with a couple of the early ones, um, might just top off the day nicely. So that's my tips for Eagle Farm. Uh, hoping Daggy is on the man. Once again, thanks to progroupracing.com.au. Uh, uh, get online, check out the website, um, have a look around and keep following the Beaver and Daggy. Look forward to catching up with you uh, in a couple of nights time as we do the preview for the weekend. Ciao for now.